Welcome to the Skycatcher Tour. We're glad you're interested in the vessel. I want to point out a few things about the cockpit before we go down below and I'll show you what the spacious accommodations have to offer. The first thing is, is the Skycatcher is very well outfitted. We have a brand new uh, a Raymarine autopilot. I think it's an EV100. Uh, depth, wind speed, wind direction. Uh, we also have a chart plotter. Chart plotter is pretty easy. We keep it down below, but it just mounts right in here like this. You just loosen this up until it fits on like so. You can adjust it any way you'd like and then you can plug this in as needed if I can get the uh, right there and screw that in. There you have chart plotter as well. The controls for the uh, autopilot are right down here. Pretty easy to go left. You use the uh, the up arrow to go right. Use the down arrow and you can do it by one and ten degree increments. The procedure for starting it up is you hit standby just to clear everything and then you can lock the autopilot in place and hit auto and once auto is engaged then it'll be steering the vessel okay hit standby again open that up and now you can be steering the vessel to start the vessel pretty straightforward you just uh, put the key in it'll beep when you turn it on and hit the start. You do want to make sure you have oh a little bit of revs on and make sure that this is at a 90 degree angle because that means it's in neutral. To shift into gear you pull up here, to shift into forward, to shift into reverse you push down. First of all, your jib sheets are right here, and uh, they come both port and starboard with self-tailing winches, and the winch handle is typically here, although we also have some below. Your furling line is right here. You would ease that out to, uh, to unfurl the sail by pulling this in, and you would pull this in, and uh, um, excuse me, you would pull that in and ease the sheet to roll it up. All the lines for this vessel are brought back to the cockpit from the, the mast. You've got the main sheet, which is right here. And then on this side, you have the main halyard in blue, the jib halyard, which you really don't need to touch because it's a, it's a roller furling jib and it's already pretty snugged up. And then your first reefing line. To reef the mainsail, you would just uh, pull the pin on the, the, the ring on the front and hook it on the hook, and then pull this line tight, and that would shorten your sail uh, after you know, using the halyard. You have your second reef is on this side, it's actually the red lever marked down hall. The other ones, uh, the uh, spinnaker halyard and the boom lift wouldn't be used too, very, uh, too much. They're all Other than that, you've got stern seats. There's a horseshoe buoy that goes there to throw over in case somebody gets uh, 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 falls overboard. You can toss it to them, and that can uh, help them float so you can get back to rescue them. Oh, and one other very important item is right here on the starboard side is a uh, barbecue grill. This can uh, grill up any good food that you would like to have on board. Now let's go below, and I'll show you the, uh, the galley, the salon, and the cabins. Welcome to Skycatcher Salon. Before we take a tour of the vessel and the cabins and all that this vessel has to offer, I do want to show you a couple things right off the bat. First thing, when you come down the companionway, this first step is very convenient because it houses a uh, selection of tools and you can actually pull those out and take them with you, but there's screwdrivers and wrenches and just things you might need right, off, uh, right out of the way. And then there's some additional ones right inside the store. Put that back in. Then you come down, and the first area I want to show you in the vessel is the galley. It's a very well laid out galley, two stainless steel sinks, lots of storage. We keep our pans and some uh, plates in that big one. Other pans right here convenient to the stove. 
And while I'm on the subject of the stove, I want to show you how it works because it is very simple. So the first thing we're going to do is take off the cutting board. You can use it on top of the stove, but I just want to show you how easy this stove is to use. Most of the time, you'll just open up the gate valve, take your lighter, and you're ready to go. You can put that right on top. You can adjust it high to low. Uh, each canister runs about uh, four hours. When you need to refill, all the supplies are right here. We've got a little convenient uh, refill bottle. You just open these slides up, and I'll show you that on the next take. But we'll um, uh, open that up and you just put a little bit of alcohol in the wicks, and that's all it takes to keep this stove running. If you're the first one aboard, you'll want to open them up and take the black covers off that uh, keeps those tanks sealed up when no one's on board for a week or so. So let me show you how easy it is to fill this stove up. It, uh, each, each burner lasts about four hours. We've been here a week, we've cooked a lot of meals, and we haven't filled it once while we've been here. But this is how you do it. You push this button in the front, which then you can lift that whole thing up. If you come on board and there's these little caps on it, they're just there to seal the, uh, the, the wick so the alcohol doesn't wick away if the boat's gonna be left unattended for a few days. So you grab the wick out, just like this, we have this real easy bottle. We always keep a gallon of it. This, you can unscrew and pour it in. It's pretty straightforward. And all you do is just drizzle a little alcohol on this stove, just like that. Now this is about half of how much this, uh, this wick can take. And if that starts to fill up at the bottom, you know you're filled, if it, you can see it down there at the other side. Again, wipe it off. You don't want any stray flames from that, but then just drop it back in. Drop that back in, and you're good to go. And again, that'll last about four hours each burner. You have the same on the oven. So, and that's it. There's no switches to flip. There's no uh, hazards of explosion with propane, hot, burns really hot, will boil water in just minutes. It's pretty amazing how the Venturi effects to, uh, to really heat the stove up. And one final thing is it's nicely gimbaled. We've been sailing at seven and a half knots, healed over about 15 to 18 degrees. Still we're able to have coffee cooking with no problem at all. It's a very stable, easy stove to use and safe. A Couple other things about this galley I do want to point out as well. The space is always at a premium on boats. So we've got this great percolator coffee maker. The percolator's right here. And, and just a little tip, if you do do percolator coffee, when it starts to bubble right through here, four minutes and then take it off the heat and you'll have perfect coffee. But this also is a great pot for just heat and water. So you want to heat water, make coffee, and then I've got this thermos here. So whatever you make, you can pour into that. If you keep the thermos here, it does a nice thing. Because when you're sailing, this um, rack might want to slide, but this keeps it kind of from sliding. So that's kind of a nice thing. When you do do the dishes and you have a bunch that you're doing, just turn this around sideways like this. Do your dishes, rinse them off, and then this will drain right into this sink as well. For just a couple of dishes, it's no problem. You see there's a little water in there, it doesn't spill. You can keep it mainly here on the side. Underneath this, though, there is a great storage place for lots of stuff. I mean, a huge store. You could bring food for a month in that hold right there. You can see here plates. This is a, a green, big green frying pan, which means it's a non-stick but not Teflon. And then the rest of our pots are all stainless steel. So up here is the silverware, and the mug storage is up here as well. Silverwares are kind of thin, but there's six servings, very compact. They stay in place when you're uh, sailing, so that's a good thing. And just be advised, though, there are sharp knives right here, and we keep those blades down, but typically not a problem. You can uh, uh, grab those without uh, hurting yourself. Oh, one last thing here, we do have the kitchen utensils. There's uh, spoons, there's measuring spoons, there's measuring cups. All ladles, Swiss spatulas, all in a nice caddy right there and a great place for bread and that kind of thing. And we have uh, some storage bowls here and that seems to stay pretty much in place. Finally, water and wine glasses up here. They're plastic, they won't break, uh, and that works out pretty well. All in all, very compact, very good galley. You can feed uh, an, an army of people on board this vessel from this very spot. 
just in case you want to use the oven and uh, and it's out of alcohol, I just want to show you how you would fill that up. The operation's the same. You do want to open this up though and make sure that the little uh, pad, little disc, is not on there before you light it. So you just unscrew that. You see how that comes out just like that? The uh, comes out just like that. And it's a little hard to get all the way out, so I usually just fill it. It's real easy to fill right from here. Okay, from the galley, let's take a look at the chart table. Really nice chart table. It's aft facing, which I really like. You can actually sit here and talk with the uh, the person at the helm and the people in the cockpit, which is nice. We uh, Our charts are actually stored right over here, and we'll have another uh, chart kit there as well, because inside the chart table are all your manuals and some spare parts and, some, and the keys also for the vessel. The chart table has a couple of really nice features, not the least of which is there's an air conditioning port right here to keep you cool. The other thing is we have a 225 watt inverter. So if you have a, a computer that you have your chart plotter and stuff on that you want to bring on a cruise, by all means bring it. You can plug it right in here to the, uh, uh, to the inverter, keep it charged up, run it all you want. We have a, uh, I, I just bring my little netbook and I can sit down here and navigate as well as we have a chart plotter up there. Speaking of chart plotters, the chart plotter for the bridge lives right here. Just take this out and it hooks in just by screwing this onto the ball valve right above the helm so you can see that. So that just lives right here to keep it protected when you're not using it. We also have a little extension cord to charge up things when you're here at port. We have a cruising guide, a chart of uh, a Charlotte Harbor. All your electronic controls are here as well. Your instruments, their VHF, the air the, the 110 are right here, all the 12 volts are here, fans, 12 volt line. All of them are labeled very well except for this one that's marked spare. The one on the far left that's marked spare, that is actually for the autopilot. So I'll see if I can get that marked up here pretty soon. You also have this voltage uh, gauge that tells you the voltage state of your batteries. And on top of that, there's a USB port that you can uh, plug into as well as these other two for your, uh, for your phones. There's a stereo that you can fade back and forth as a manual. You've got speakers inside the cabin and speakers in the cockpit as well. And finally, you have the uh, air conditioning controls that when you start up, you just push and you want to um, move the temperature down to the temperature that you want it to be once you've turned on this air conditioning switch and made sure that the seacock is open, which I'll point out in the aft cabin, which we're going to right now. All right, let's go into the aft cabin. This is the master stateroom on the vessel, and uh, there's a couple of features I'll point out. One piece of bad news with the aft cabin. There's a nice big hanging locker, but in that hanging locker is the 12,000 BTU air conditioner and all the electronics for the autopilot and all that kind of stuff. So that locker is pretty well used up. However, on top of that locker, you'll see a shelf. and that shelf, you can put a rollaway luggage. Uh, and there's also a nice big hanging locker in the forward cabin you can share. And there's hooks on the doors here to hang things up as well. So that's the only bad news. Now I'll show you the good news. Come on in. So this cabin has a great seat. You can kind of sit down, get dressed. It's got full headroom and a skylight up above. Lots of opening ports. It has an opening port here and an opening port in the cockpit. And a huge bed. It's literally a king size bed that goes all the way down. Very long on this side, a little shorter on the outside, but pretty good size berth. You also have fans, a uh, air conditioning um, outlet, which really can keep it cool if you want it to, and of course lights. The only thing I really want to point out here is underneath this cushion, right behind the engine room, there's a there's a couple of cushions right here, and there's a cushion right here. If you lift that up, there's a hatch, and that's where the uh, the seacock for the air conditioning unit is. So you, before you start that, you always want to make sure that that's open because the air conditioning unit needs water in order to um, uh, to function properly or it will burn out. We wouldn't want that to happen. Um, big shelf right here again that you can put uh, a luggage on and uh, lots of storage space, very roomy berth, very comfortable place. I've been uh, here for the last week. So this is the app cap. So this is my favorite feature of this boat. Yes, it sails great. Yes, it's a good looking boat. But this salon where you have 
wrap around seating on this table, you have seating across for three or four people, it's a great social place on this boat. I don't need to point out, you know, how you would sit down, but I do want to point out some other things about this salon just for your uh, uh, enjoyment on board the vessel. The first is if you do have a big party and you want to uh, uh, have more people to uh, sit down, there are a couple little uh, holes right here underneath. Let me grab this other one here. And then this slides open and you can seat more people and have some, uh, in fact, you can even pull the tablecloth over to hang and you can seat more people there. So you have a big expandable table as well. Also, this table, drops down. There's a couple of uh, bars right here you can see. You loosen those up, the table drops down, and there's a uh, cushion that can uh, fit right on top of here and make a, another bed. So you can actually sleep two people here, a third person here, two people in the aft cabin, and two people forward. So it's one of those rare boats you can actually fully sleep seven people on board this boat, which is pretty good for a 33-foot vessel. Underneath this settee cushion right here, there's a, is the holding tank, and there's also a pump if you're out at sea and you want to pump that out. It is a manual, but it's a it's a, um, a diaphragm pump works pretty well. Also, the deck pump out though, most of the time you just come into the marina and you can pump the uh, the holding tank out at the dock uh, uh, through that. Uh, storage in all these cabinets, good use of storage. We've got all kinds of um, uh, things that can go in there. We have, like I said, charts, and there's uh, spare parts in that other side after the chart place but uh, lots of shelving and it's all pretty good storage where you can put the stuff in and it doesn't fall off, which is really a key thing. All in all, this salon is, uh, you've got the skylights above that you can open up and actually let light in. Uh, just a comfortable space to hang out and very functional. One other important thing I want to share with you about this uh, salon, you'll see this outlet right here. It's a GFI outlet. If you ever are on the vessel and the outlets don't work, probably the first thing to do is just reset the GFI there and that should probably turn your outlets on for power. Another great feature about this vessel is that the head is split up. You have the vanity on the port side here and uh, if someone's taking a shower or using the head, this door closes, no problem. Someone else can still be brushing their teeth, combing their hair, blow dry, whatever they need to do, and it doesn't disturb anybody that's in the shower. So two people can be getting ready in the day, uh, in the start of the day. Uh, lots of storage here. You'll see there's a cupboard. You can put a tremendous amount of stuff. One, one thing I do want you to know, too, is right to the right aft of the light in the vanity, there's a first aid kit. So if you need a bandage or some antiseptic cream or something, there's a, uh, a first aid kit that lives right there. Uh, in the, uh, the head and shower, there's a seat that drops down, covers the head, great place to sit down and take a shower. You've got all your controls for the shower and all that type of thing. And then when you're using the head, you just lift that seat up. It's a very easy compartment to clean. It's all fiberglass in one piece and a great little port light that opens up and keeps it um, uh, keeps the steam from uh, building up in the boat too much. Uh, very user friendly for uh, multiple people to get ready in the day in this head. So, first aid kit here, and also you've got two covered outlets that are right here tied to the GFI that's in the other side there as well, so it's a fully protected. So finally we come to the V-Birth, which is a pretty traditional V-Birth on board a vessel. One nice thing about this, it does have a fully closing and lockable door. You can uh, have great privacy in this cabin. And also behind that door is a great shelled locker. And then over onto this side, you have a great hanging locker, really a lot of space. And on top of both of them, you can actually put luggage. So this really has the most storage space of any of the cabins on board the vessel. Plus you have lots of hooks on the wall. So really a great place to live. Um, fans, lights, uh, big skylight up above that you can open and get uh, both in and out of the cabin if you need to, and also get lots of great ventilation. Uh, overall, Tremendous living space, separation as well. You can't hear one cabin from the other and you've got uh, a great place to live.
Thank you for joining us on this tour of Skycatcher. We hope to have you aboard very, very soon.